a few words. We have a couple of quick little speeches. Thank you guys so much for being here to help us celebrate the library. Um, Sunderland Public Library is so special to me, but I really feel like it is so special to this whole community. Um, it's when I you know, first started working here, before I first started working here, I um, wasn't actually looking for a job, but when I heard it was open, they were looking for a director, I kind of jumped at the chance um, just because I knew what an amazing <laughs> place this was. Um, I had, you know, heard incredible things that you guys have the best programs. Sunderland has the best director. Sunderland has the best trustees. Sunderland has the best supportive friends. Sunderland has the best staff and Sunderland has the best community in general. Um, I just have to agree. Um, this is truly a really special place. Um, the library would not be what it is without this building, um, for one. It, the space has really allowed us to open up and offer what we do. Um, this library would not be what it is without the staff. We have the most incredible, hardworking, dedicated staff, so thank you to all of them for all that they do. Um, the Board of Library Trustees is probably the most supportive trustees board I have ever worked with or known of, um, so thank you to all the trustees, not just current, but past as well. Um, it's incredible to see um, so many of you here tonight um, and supporting us. And then I also um, just want to thank uh, the friends of the library, truly the best friends in the entire world. Um, every library director I know is always green with envy anytime the topic of the Friends of Sunderland Public Library comes up because they are truly hardworking, dedicated, and just supportive. Um, so thank you so much, and thank you to Sunderland Public Library. This is Justine Roseborn, our chair of the Board of Library Trustees. Chair. Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, I just wanted to say that we'd also like to thank the trustees um, for their support um, and the guidance that they give to Catherine, our fabulous director. We really have been so lucky to have her and past directors, but Catherine has been amazing. And Catherine really, you know, she runs the library, on a, you know, runs the staff, the, the library, but she really cares about this building as if it were her own home. Um, you know, she's, there's always something happening and she is on it and we truly appreciate that because it's not just her workplace, she really treats it like it's her home. Um, and we're incredibly grateful. I also would like to thank the friends um, who are just this amazing active group of people who support this library and make it really extra special um, with our supporting our programming and um, you know getting um, books and supplies and everything and they're just a great group of people and they work all year long um, supporting the library and raising funds. So thank you very much. Um, and I also, um, there's one person who has uh, been here for a very long time. She has been a trustee since 1996, Lauren Starr. Um, and she was here before. Yeah, only 35. <laughs> she started as a two year old. And, um, but Lauren um, was an integral part of getting this fabulous library built and has remained um, with the library trustees since then. And I can't really express enough how much we appreciate her continued support of the library. She, again, loves this building as if it's her own. And um, it's, um, lost my train of thought. Um, the, the institutional knowledge that she has is so helpful and we really appreciate that she's still here after all this time and loving this building. So, um, thank you all. Uh, yep, so next, if Lauren, if you'd like to come up and say a few words as our. So I was thinking uh, back in, I don't know, maybe 1994, 95, when we started thinking about planning for a new building, um, kind of laying the groundwork, and we were also approaching the centennial of the Graves Building. We had one of our worst fundraising ideas, which was a t-shirt 
that sold very slowly, but it had our new motto on it, the Graves Memorial Library Next 100 Years. And maybe some of you have one in the bottom of a drawer. Um, and, you know, to think back that, uh, you know, that we may be 30 years in and 20 years in now to the next 100 years is kind of astounding. Um, and I think when you build a building like this, that's what you're, you're looking for. You're looking to the future. Um, this building was a result of the hard work of a lot of people. And when I went back and found my notes from the opening, you know, we just the participation across town of, you know, the highway department, the water district, the, you know, the select board, the, and of course, the, um, everyone who's involved in the library. I do want to call out the, the, um, the, obviously the architect, the contractor, the trustees, the friends, um, the staff, um, and then the people who really devoted themselves for really a solid 10 years to get this done, the capital committee, and a very devoted building committee. Um, Christy Anderson, Liz Sillen, Gary Breer, Peter Gagarin, um, Sharon Sherry was our non-voting director. And then I would like to remember three people who we have lost, um, Dan McKenna, Marilyn Munn, and Rich Morse, who are really critical. Um, so as I said, you know, I think this building was about a vision. Um, Sunderland has had libraries since 1794, which is pretty amazing. Um, the graves when the graves opened, the, one of the records we have from 1902, I think this was in the paper this week, when it first, oh, the first year, they touted having 352 patrons over the entire year and circulating 4,600 items. In by 1995, when we really started you know, saying that we had outgrown that building. Uh, we had 1,500 patrons a month and 33 items were circulating. And we honestly um, thought, well, you know, we have a very active library. We don't have really have room for programs, but, you know, probably our circulation and patronage will remain the same. Well, our patronage, and patron patronage now is 2,500 people a month and 50, over 5,000 items a month. Uh, so that's a 60% increase since we left the graves. I think Peter, do my math. Um, and, um, and we're circulating every month the number of items that circulated in 1902 for the entire year. So again, I'd just like to thank the staff. Um, I think Aaron and Kelly were the only people left like me who actually worked at the graves, uh, you know, Vanessa. Um, the wonderful directors that we've had, um, starting with Allison Ernst, Sharon, Sheila, Adam, and the wonderful Catherine. Um, and then finally, I'd just like to say that, um, you know, when a building like the Graves was built, it was a gift to the town, essentially. But now, now library is something you have to do for yourself. It's really something that we decide to invest in. And that investment is hard to make. And this town would not have made the investment were it not for the matching money from the Board of Library Commissioners. And I was just telling someone, when we got a grant for $1.1 million, now this building seems like a bargain right now at $2.4 million, but 20 years ago it seemed like a lot of money. And when we got the grant from the Library Commissioners, it's what pushed the project um, into uh, fruition because the town would not have gone for it without that help. So between that money, townspeople and the friends who raised over $170,000. That's how we got this building. And um, I think that's, uh, that, was, has, that program has allowed both us and many towns around us, and many towns still to come to move the library service into the 21st century. So, thank you. Thank you. Peter? Hello, uh, this is a great day, isn't it? Um, I'm Peter Gagarin. I was recruited onto the building committee by Marilyn Munn, actually, um, dear person. Um, and we spent five years, uh, you know, from uh, five years that I remember, maybe they, Lauren would probably add it longer, that, you know, through the planning and finally the building. Um, I've been in this building a whole lot since it opened many, many times. I'm guessing that most of you have been here quite a few times also. Um, but I wonder 
how well you've all been paying attention to the building. And so I thought I'd have a little quiz. <laughs> and if I ask one, if I, after I ask a question, if you know the answer, wait just a moment, don't shout it out immediately. Give people just a chance to think, okay? I'm not gonna take any grades, but if we see somebody that's really sharp, you know, you may be recruited for the trustees. So be careful what you say. Uh, question number one. What's buried underneath the parking lot? And it's not Jimmy Hoffa. <laughs> okay, how many know? Some people know. Okay, what do you, what's the answer? Wells. Geothermal wells. Geothermal Right, how many? Oh. <laughs> Are there 30 of them? No. How many? Randy, that's not, not what, what, what's the exact, do we know the exact number? 18? It's 18. It's 18. Is it 18? It's 18, yeah. There's 14 heat pumps that are And so far, they're all still working. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. But to me, it's amazing that 20 years ago, when the building was actually completed, but obviously before that, when the whole design was taking place, so that's a couple more years, we were doing ge geothermal. Okay. Heating and cooling. Okay. No oil. So on. I mean, it's really quite remarkable when you look back on it. And to me, it was always just stress because, oh God, what happens when they bust and now we got to go dig up the parking lot and so on. But I think I've escaped having responsibility for that happening. So. <laughs> Question number two. What's in the southeast corner of this building? And in case you're geographically challenged a little bit, that's down that way. And if you think about it, if you go down that way, the stacks on this side don't go all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. And the reading room, the, the lane reading room, okay, goes further, but it doesn't go all the way to the right. What's there? Okay, who, how many know? Hmm, for those, someone that doesn't know, what do you think might be there? Any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again. Uh, who's got who's got the answer for this one? It's the town vault. It's the town vault. The town vault was prior to the building here. It was in the old town hall, which was becoming the Blue Heron, and so it was sort of important that we get a replacement. And I think it was. Mary Ellen is here. I think it was your, your husband, Tom Feidenkevitz, that, that made the suggestion. He was telling me last night, he says, when he suggested it to Wendy, Wendy says, oh, I'm supposed to walk all the way over there every day. <laughs> but I think Wendy really likes it. I remember it. that conversation, and but Wendy I, was very upset with him. Yeah, well, Wendy, that. ever since then, Wendy has discovered that, yeah, she's got a really good vault over there. <laughs> um, and we don't advertise it, but, you know, it's a part of the building, and... Um, I think it's sort of cool that we got that in there. Uh, and third and final question, what's in the basement? Answer. Not like there is no basement. <laughs> well, that's mostly true. <laughs> oh. Meaning, there is no basement, absolutely. This is just a concrete slab with footings around the outside and so on. But there is something that we did under the building, okay, that turned out not to have been in the plans. But we had to do it, which was that when the site people started doing the excavation, uh, like any contractor, they're looking for things that they can say aren't right so they can get a change order and make more money. And they basically, they, no, this is the way construction works. Yeah. Uh, and basically they said that the soil here was not as good as it, you know, we had done test borings and they had said that the soil was satisfactory and so on, but they said, no, the soil is too slippery, okay? It's not stable enough. And after, I think we actually stopped construction for a couple of weeks, two, three weeks or something, deciding what to do, and finally it's like, okay, and a whole bunch of the bad soil got carted away and a whole bunch of good soil or good dirt or good gravel, I don't know if I ever knew which it was, got put in instead. So no, we don't have a basement, but we have a whole new bunch of uh, soil or dirt or gravel or whatever to build this. And 
here we are 20 years later, and as far as I can tell, the building is exactly where we built it. <laughs> <laughs> and some places can't say that, so that's pretty good. Um, I would like to share my at least one memory I have of the building process, my, and it's really my fondest memory, and that is that um, all the concrete had been poured, slab and you know all that stuff, and the steel work was going up, and there was substantial steel work because two years earlier, I think especially because two years earlier, part of the roof in the elementary school had fallen in, and I remember somebody seeing as the steel work went up, someone commenting, boy, this roof is not gonna fall in, because there was a lot of, there's a lot of steel used in this. And we were having uh, construction meetings uh, every Wednesday. Uh, it's, you know, and Lauren about, they've been going on for about a month, and I know nothing about building buildings, but she called me up about a month into it and said, Peter, she says, can you come to the meeting? She says, she'd been going to all of them and she liked to have someone else from the committee with her. So I went to the meeting and lo and behold, I went to every, all the rest of the meetings because that's it- That's what happens when I call you. That's what happens. <laughs> when Lauren calls, don't necessarily answer the phone. Okay? <laughs> but at some point in the fall, because uh, we, started, we started construction in sort of, I think August, September, that sort of range, and uh, sometime in the fall, the steel was going up, and we go into one of these Wednesday afternoon meetings that we have, and the meetings were basically, we always had a standing list of problems that had not yet been solved. And so first we would go over the problems that hadn't been solved and see if, in fact, in the week, anything had been solved, if we needed to make any more decisions about that, and so on, and then what were the new issues? And we'd add them onto the bottom of the list, and, and so that week, a new issue came up. And the new issues often were questions that might end up in change orders, which the builders, you know, obviously were glad to bring forward because they could then charge for it. And so this was one that the question was, and we're back to Wendy's vault, beautiful vault, concrete walls this thick, ceiling concrete this thick, okay? And the question raised by the builder was the vault, uh, did it meet the requirements of being properly waterproof? I'm thinking, Jesus, how hard is it gonna rain? You know, that you got a roof <laughs> over it too, and so on. But obviously what they meant was if there's a fire, okay? And the, and the uh, fire folks come and they, they put a lot of water on it. And I think the, 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 the acid test was you have to be able to aim a hose at it and, pour, and shoot water at it for six hours and it keep the water out. And concrete is sort of porous. And so, no, you know, the architect was sort of, mm, he really wasn't willing to sign a piece of paper that said, yeah, it meets the needs. And so we you know, said to the builder, well, you know, what's, you know, what do we do? And he said, well, there's this stuff, you know, and you can, you can, coat the, basically put a coating on all the whole outside, you know, all the outside walls, uh, the ceiling, so on, and then that waterproofs it. How much is that going to cost us? Mm, $5,000. Okay, and we had to decide within a week because the steel was going up. <coughs> okay, and the steel was like right adjacent to the vault and so you wouldn't have the access you know, within another week or two, you were not going to have any access. And that was a hard one to swallow. And I sent, I'd been sending reports to Tom Feidenkevitz, chair of the board of selectmen, every week. You know, I'd do it Wednesday evening, and I'd say, here's what happened this week, here are the problems solved, here are the new problems. Just to keep them, just for good communication, because you never know when good communication helps, but it never hurts. And, um, got a call Friday morning, no, Friday afternoon, I got a call from Tom. Be at the library at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Show up at the library at nine o'clock. There's Tom, there's Wendy, because that's her vault. There's Chip Thomas, this highway department superintendent, and two guys that, were, that made up the rest of the highway department, okay? And Chip has located a source for this powder Okay, that you use for the waterproofing. You mix it with water, and he's found some, 
because they can eat Hampton. He got that, and he got uh, a big tub to mix the stuff in, and he got a source of water, hooked up a hose from someplace, and he got a, he'd arranged with the building guy to borrow his scissor lift so he could get up on the roof, okay? And so, and he bought some brooms, and, you know, we started mixing this stuff up and, you know, putting it on the sides, and it's not that easy, actually, to get, you know, stuff this week. But whatever, by about 11 o'clock, there was this, you know, beautiful coating of, I think the technical word is goop, okay, <laughs> that was, you know, whatever, and I think we're done here. We cleaned up, we left. I show up at the next Wednesday meeting. First thing the, the building superintendent says is, quite seriously, you guys did a good job on that fault. <laughs> <laughs> and the cost of materials was $247. <laughs> and somehow that to me was just, that was a real highlight of this, of this building process. And um, anyway, I would like just to finish with saying that we owe our tremendous thanks to two, from my perspective, young women, okay, who were just absolutely essential for the fact that this building got done and got done so well. And the first one is our librarian at the time, Sharon Sherry, okay? And she was extraordinary in, a, in just getting things done. And we would have, we had meeting and meeting and meeting and meeting of the building committee and every meeting it seemed, Sharon walked out of it with a to-do list of stuff to get done. And you know, by the time the next meeting came and maybe it was next week or something, you know, we'd be there and Sharon would have taken care of every single item, every single week, every single time we met. It was the same, you know, toss it on Sharon, Sharon will take care of it, Sharon took care of it. I would hear her on the phone with the contractor, she was the toughest man. Yeah. <laughs> now Sharon, after we had the building built, you know, maybe she got a little bored, maybe she realized, oh no, I got special skills. She applied for, got the job in Greenfield and they built a whole new library up there that was way more complicated this, than this process, both in terms of the scale of the building and the politics and whatever, whatever. And then she got done with that and she still obviously wasn't satisfied and now she's in Amherst. Oh, and, oh God, you know. <laughs> but she is an amazing, wonderful, incredibly talented woman. And, you know, in the, in the world of building construction, boy, she could hold her own with anybody. Mm -hmm. And that was number one. And the other young woman, again, from my perspective, of course, was Lauren. Uh, Lauren was the chair of our committee for the whole time. Okay, she, um, let's see what I put down here. I says, and what an extraordinarily fine leader she was. She kept things moving forward relentlessly. It wasn't just the part where the building was built, okay? That was just year five, okay? With all the planning, finding the right art architect, the work required to get the state grant that paid for almost half the building to get the town to vote for its share of the money, and then there was the question of where to put the building. There wasn't space to do a renovation in addition to the old Graves Library. We looked at other places in town, out near the elementary school, down by the highway garage, but Lauren felt it needed to be in the center of town. She was absolutely right, and here we are. Thank you for coming. Thanks to all the trustees and the friends and Catherine and your wonderful staff for making this fine building such a wonderful library. Thank you, Peter, and Peter and their, his wife, they're fabulous supporters of our library, so thank you. Um, and next up we have Representative Natalie Clay. Come on up. Thank you. <laughs> an, an old trustee I know. of our oh, I know. fabulous library. This is how we first met. That's right, that's right. Uh, so I moved to Sunderland in 2006 and got a call from Lauren Starr. <laughs> asking if I would consider serving on the Library Board of Trustees. And like so many of you who have received calls from Lauren, you don't say no <laughs> when Lauren calls. Uh, but it was such a beautiful invitation to be a part of this community. Uh, this library is, is so 
very, very special. And it's because of all of the people that we see on the screen and all of the people who are who could be here today um, and this, this entire town, as well as people who are coming in from other communities because of what you've built here. Uh, you get a real sense of love when you step through these doors. Uh, I love bringing people here. Uh, we just recently held an event uh, with the chair of the Energy Committee in, in Boston in the State House, and this, this room was packed. The community room was full of, of people from all over Franklin County wanting to learn more about what we were doing in the State House in terms of climate change. And Aaron, thank you for, for helping to organize that. And Catherine, thank you for opening up the building early uh, to allow us to be here. Um, but you know, we are, we're just, when I, when I think about this place, we're very, very lucky. We're, we're very, very lucky. Um, but it is the result of a lot of, of hard work uh, and a lot of dedicated people who give of themselves to make this place what it is. Uh, so I do want to thank you know, the trustees for everything you do, the friends, special place in my heart, um, and certainly Catherine, you are one of the best things that ever happened to this place, and you've fostered and supported an incredible team here. Uh, and, and so thank you. Uh, Lauren, you talked about the next 100 years. You know, I really look forward you know, to the next 80 years and beyond uh, because this library will be here not only for this generation, but for generations to come. So happy birthday to the Sunderland Public Library. Thank you.